Greetings everyone, in this video we will be talking about the rise of Thaumaturgy and the fall of the Eternal Empire. In my previous video I talked about the fall of Val and rise of the Eternal Empire and Emperor Chiris, so if you are interested in that topic click the link in the top right corner. Now without further ado, let's begin. All Thaumaturgy was banned in the Eternal Empire and all gems were buried deep inside Highgate Mountain. But when Chirrus Perandus became the Emperor, he decided to allow the Thaumaturgy to return to humanity. He even provided help to Malachi and Inquisitor Maligaro for their experiments. Maligaro invented a spike that would inject the gem's power into a human being, thus granting them immense power and changing them forever. But Malachi had even bigger plans in mind. He wanted to create an army of soldiers imbued with the power of gems and even turn his lover Lady Diala into a gemlin queen. But some people still remember the fall of Val and did not want the Eternal Empire to make the same mistake. They believed that all Thaumaturgy should be banned again and Emperor Chirrus should be removed from the throne. The man who decided to act against Chirrus' transgressions was High Templar Vol. In order to overthrow the Emperor that tainted the Empire with Thaumaturgy, he started gathering all the support he could. He decided to start by recruiting the Karui to his cause. He asked King Kaun to join him and sail his armies to Rayclass to capture the southern coast. In exchange, he promised Kaun that when he seizes the throne of the Eternal Empire, he would officially grant these lands to the Karui and acknowledge their sovereignty. Kaun ended up agreeing with Vol and sailed to Rayclass. In order for his army to advance, however, he needed to capture Lionized Watch, which was the main stronghold in the southern coast. As soon as the Karui arrived, Mercius Lionai would use his archers to inflict heavy casualties onto the Karui forces, and since it is forbidden for men of the Karui to use bows or any other ranged weapons, they had no way to deal with Lionai's forces. But the Karui women did not have such restrictions and ambushed the Imperials raining death on them from above. While all of this was happening, High Templar Vol was already looking for more allies to join his cause in overthrowing Chiras. But the Eternal Empire's forces were preparing as well. Malachi improved on Maligaro's technology and instead of injecting the gem's essence into humans, he would instead embed these gems into their bodies, creating the first gemlings. Malachi used this method to create an entire legion of gemling soldiers and converted his lover Diala into a gemling queen, the most powerful gemling in the empire. But Emperor Chirrus was cautious of the gemling legion and embedded another gem into his heart. If he died it would mean death to every single legionnaire. When the rebels besieged Sarn and Emperor Chirrus rallied his gemling legion to defend it, Lord Mayor Ondar killed him with a poison blade, which in turn destroyed every gemling legionnaire in the city. Without the support of the gemling legion, the defenders of Sarn were overrun by the rebels and Higher Templar Vol became the new emperor. Since Vol despised all thaumaturgy and wanted to rid the world from its corrupting influence, he ordered Malachi, the main thaumaturgist of the Empire, to be burned alive. But Malachi promised Vol that he can put an end to all thaumaturgy. He showed Vol his rapture device and told him that it is powerful enough to kill the beast which was the source of all thaumaturgy in the world. Emperor Vol was excited at the prospect of destroying all thaumaturgy once and for all and trusted Malachi and his rapture device. They went to Highgate where the beast resides, but instead of killing it, Malachi entered it through a crack that the rapture device created. While inside the beast, he gained immense power and caused an event known as the Cataclysm. I write this now in hope that someone will remain. Someone may remember. The sun is an orb of blood. Twisted twilight shrouds my eyes. The air reeks of anguish. San has plunged into nightmare. The man who served me coffee now writhes on the floor. He rants of visions he alone can see as writhing red tentacles grow from his face as if his eyes had been seeds waiting to sprout. He is quiet now, my waiter. No more cackling and screaming, dead. Of my fellow patrons, only two live. The others have fallen. Their blood is everywhere. 
The survivors, gemlings both, their skin shrivels and grays to the hue of necrosis. Their gems flare with unholy luster, their eyes black as hatred. A gemling ghoul, it twisted off a corpse's head, gnaws at skull-like dog. My head now, visions clawing at me, thinking burns. I see horror, envy the mute corpses at my feet. Words flay me, flee me, all is madness. By waking up the beast, he unleashed immense power on Terei class, which corrupted the minds, changed the flesh, and even in death you were not safe from its influence. And just so, another mighty empire fell to ruin overnight, leaving nothing but death and destruction behind. This is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, press the thumbs up button, and if you would like to see more content like this, consider subscribing. If you have any ideas for future episodes, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye everyone.